And you can do the same thing there. Okay, so while Denise is doing that, hello and welcome to Connection and Conversations. So human connection is the most powerful immune boosting health promoting tool that you have. And I'm delighted that you're joining us today or watching us in replay because I get to connect and chat with the fab who I refer to as Zen lady, Denise Brannock. Hi, Denise. Hi, Sinead. Great to be here. Thank you. Um, so a lot of the focus in my work is on the physical in order to impact the mental emotional. And I get to connect with my clients through conversation and techniques that I share with them. But my interpretation from watching you online is that you work differently. So Denise, can you please tell everyone how you work with people? Well, I think really for me, from the experience that I've had is the power of presence, that presence and relationship with myself first and foremost. And then comes the, the training. So I'm, you know, I'm trained as a coach, uh, an EFT practitioner, a Ho'oponopono mentor. And I suppose really for me, the whole life experience now, uh, given the journey that I've had is going deeper into the connection with myself, my life form, life force. And that's the power of presence. We talk about being in the now. And I used to have it at a thinking level, thinking I had it, but I have it at a felt level and I'm, I'm going deeper into that experience. So really when I'm working with uh, clients and a client could present with, you know, anything from anxiety, depression, chronic stress, or they just are blocking themselves in a way and they're coming into the realization that yes, it is me doing it. And they're gonna take responsibility for clearing whatever it is in them that needs to be cleared. And the way I would uh, describe it is, and this again is coming from my own experience, but it's also with, with training. Memory that has an emotional charge mm -hmm. will play out in anxiety, in stress, in overwhelm, you name it, we know it. And we will distract ourselves from it. The work that I do with clients, and it could be through sitting in presence, through inquiry, um, what's the beauty of uh, some of the techniques that I have. People don't have to tell the story because that can be very painful to relive that story when there is an emotional charge. So there is a way to clear the emotional charge of the memory uh, without even telling the story. And what I usually find actually um, with clients is they could come in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And within an hour of the inquiry, and when I'm, you know, when I'm asking questions. Um, can I just can I, can I interrupt for a second? Sure. I'm awful for this, Denise. But so we, when you say inquire, you, you just mean having a chat, asking questions. Well, ask tuning in, because obviously at the chemistry check, I've already no, I've asked the questions. I know what we're dealing with. I know what the problem is. I know how they want to feel. You know, I would say that the business that we're in, people want to gain relief. For me, it's about lasting change. You know, I ran yeah. around the surface of life. I, I got plenty of relief going to this, that, and the other, but lasting change, that's an inside job. That's the work that I do with clients. Mm -hmm. So it's lasting change. It's clearing the emotional charge. So no, it's not just having a chat or, you know, it's, I'm tuned in, I'm watching everything. I'm watching eye movement, I'm watching everything. Any interference, any disruption because the mind hides the truth and any story will do. So mm -hmm. the trust, the relationship is key. Okay. The client's mind is checking, can I trust this person in front of me to hold presence to themselves, not to interfere, you know, not to get in the way of my journey while they unravel what it is that they need to unravel within themselves. So. One, for me, the responsibility is one, safety, support, trust. And usually I've kind of gained a bit of trust on the chemistry, you know, on the chemistry check in terms of, you know, the free consultation, somebody rings, you know, I spend time at that, you know, I make sure that this is the right kind of um, connection. And then you say yes, and the client then says yes. So... 
Denise, when you talk about chemistry, you're not talking about biochemistry. You're not talking about, you know, blood tests and things like that. You're talking about the chemistry between people or that, that connection and between people. Tonight, I suppose in coaching, we refer to it as a chemistry check. And thanks for actually bringing that up because I, I don't refer to it as a chemistry check. Um, it's more somebody reaches out. That takes a lot to make a phone call when they know it's, it's going to bring about change. And also some people can be in a state of anxiety or just not feeling right in themselves. And I know from my own journey, that can be hard to make that call because our tendency is we want to hide away because we're hiding it from ourselves and we've been hiding it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But if it's coming up to the surface, then it's going to really interfere with our, with our life. So really it's the consultation, the initial over the phone consultation where somebody is making an inquiry, am I the right fit for them? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. That would be something that would be very important in my work as well. Just having usually a short chat and, um, and then I start with an online consultation because it's important that they, that I'm the right person for them and um, that I'm see that I'm the right fit for them, but also that they would see that they would, that I was the right fit for them. Basically. I think that that's what you're saying as well. Well, I, in a phone call, I, I, you know, so if we, if we have a phone call, I always say to people, have a think about it. Mm. Uh, more often than not, they'll feel no, uh, that explanation, it makes sense. And I will even use a technique on the phone if I feel somebody's in a heightened state of anxiety or that, because that just allows them to come down. So I have no problem. You know, my, the, the work that I do on myself is what I'm bringing into the world. So mm -hmm. uh, bringing to clients. So that, you know, doing that in, in the initial free consultation when somebody phones, or gets in touch you know just to allow them to get out what it is they need to get out and then we're clear you know yes I can help you have a think about it but more often than not they say no I'd like to book in and then we just go from there so then our first session is we're getting into transformation and, and I say that and people might say oh really you know yeah we are and the reason I can say that is the transformation I am doing day in day out on myself that's what I bring into the sessions Mm -hmm. That is my uh, commitment to myself, bring it in, then I bring it out. And yes, you've got all the training, the supervision and all of that. Um, and I, I love, I just love the work that I do. And that might sound strange because we, this perception of, of um, you know, all these emotions that we try to run away from, but actually when we step back and we can see them within ourselves, only then can we change. And it's so hard to see them when we're in them. I tried for years, it doesn't work. And that then right fit, that support, and then we get transformation. And we're not talking months. Within an hour, there'll be transformation. Mm -hmm. And then usually I would start, you know, depending on, on how long somebody's had something or, you know, how long it's been playing out. Um, I'd recommend four sessions. And really after that, a lot of people kind of go differently. I want more of this. And Sinead, I, for me, <laughs> for me, because that freedom within at times is not an easy path. Even now, I've got a foot firmly in my peace and ease. Mm -hmm. But that lens perception, I'm a devil. I'm a devil for, you know, shifting between the two. And if we want to dig deeper into a well, if you were digging into an actual well itself, you know, you're knocking at walls. Mm -hmm. I don't have walls to knock through anymore. I've done that work, but I want to go deeper into, I want the experience of being in the dance of the present moment all the time before I die. Absolutely. I want because... the experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if, and if we're not, we're going to miss it all, you know? Um, it's, I, it's... I, don't, I don't even get into that story anymore because... Okay. You no, know, and I really don't. And I'll tell you why, because I realise that I was, I was forced because I knew when I was younger, this internal struggle isn't right, but I couldn't figure it out. And so you live with it, you live with it, you live with it, you get on, you get on. And then it led me into chronic stress because I was searching outside the whole time. Mm -hmm. And in that crossroads, and it's a serious crossroads, you know, which way am I going? Yeah. It gets to a stage where you can't live in yourself you're not comfortable in your own skin absolutely you're, you're perceived to be successful in life and everything's going fine but 
Mm-hmm. It was like the void within was never far away. So sitting in my own company uh, wasn't easy. That anxiety, that fear. I don't have fear. I've tested it. Brilliant. Now, that's not to say, Sinead, curveballs can come. But mm-hmm. what I know now is if something comes, I can see it with the wider view. I have an acceptance of life, of curveballs. But when we're in our personal power, when we're in our deeper lens of perception that's connected into the unified field, which to me is nature, we know we're going to be okay. So we don't carry fear. We won't believe the stories, the conditioned thinking that controls, that manipulates. And we're doing it all to ourselves. Absolutely. That all dissolves. It's like I'm not living from the headspace anymore. I'm, you know, I'm free to be me in the body mind mechanism and uh life is just so much nicer and, and i'm going to after more and more of it <laughs> yeah life is absolutely amazing i totally totally agree with you um so can i ask you what the changes that you observe in people as they work with you say from session to session so What being a witness to the client coming into the awareness and having the safety to release, even if it's a momentary kind of, you know, kind of, but very quickly, you know, it's my job to keep somebody safe. So quickly we're releasing that. And then it's like wider view, wider view, wider view. And suddenly it's like, I cannot believe that this was blocking me this memory that had an emotional charge that goes back to when I was two, back to when I was three, back to when I was four. It always goes back to when one to kind of seven, eight, when the subconscious mind is wide open and they're cleaning and clearing up and releasing emotional charge. So I suppose really what I get to witness is freedom. I get to witness, absolutely. Uh, you know. Can I just bring you back just one second? So for people watching, who are subconscious mind what do you mean by what's the difference between my subconscious mind and my uh, conscious mind I mean I know what the difference is but people might not know that so can you just elaborate a little bit on what the subconscious is so I now would equate the subconscious I'm going to call it uh, the body and the body in terms of we call it memory so we know there's a mechanism that's like the storehouse and to me it's like a hard drive on a computer Mm -hmm. and then we have I'm going to call it like storage fear app has an emotional charge anxiety app overwhelm app procrastination and all of this that's stored because of how we adapted when younger whether we dumbed down or dumbed up or somebody said something and we interpreted it's all our perception but it's the impact it has on covering up that connection into life and then it plays out for years and years until we stop and look at it so the subconscious mind to me is the hard drive it's where everything is stored. It's out of our conscious awareness for the most part. So you will have people saying, I thought I changed that. And now it just played out again. Well, it will continue to play out until the emotional charge is cleared. Then it's just memory. Then it won't come up. It won't be, it won't come up like a, a, a storm or a volcano. And I describe it like having a phone. The phone is called the immune system or, you know, call it the physical. And it's in optimum condition when you get it. And then we're downloading, you know, we're downloading all these, the fear, app, the anxiety yes. app, when younger. And, and updating it. <laughs> well, well we're, 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 yeah, we're lobbing, we're lobbing on or we're attaching to other anxieties or fears outside of us and other people. And then that's a matrix. You get lost in yes. stuff like a virus. Yes. So it's the work I do. I describe it as we clear, we, we look at there's your anxiety app. Do you want to hold on to it? Well, the answer is going to be no. We're going to clear it. But it's not to recycle it to come back in. It's literally, and I don't like saying delete because it's all parts of us. But once the emotional charge has been seen, acknowledged, aware, and gone, it's memory. And I could even go back and test and ask somebody, it could be a fear of water. Mm -hmm. And when Mm -hmm. we've gone back in memory and cleared it, and when I say go back in memory, I'm talking, asking questions. We're talking like this. Yes. So if you had a fear, I'd be tuning in and I'd be, we'd be following, you know, the mind will reveal the information mm-hmm. and then the emotional charge. And once you've cleared that, you could go back and test, go back and test the memory. And usually you'll find people 
just tell it like it's happening to somebody else. Right. Uh, right. So is so, it can I is it kind of like well I suppose how I would look at that then is we have life experiences and we can remember those experiences the, the gifts that we got from them no matter how how good or how awful they were. So there's always a gift in, in everything and it's and, it, and you're just looking back almost like mm. it's almost like looking about I guess at a movie about yourself but yes, you're saying, Sinead, I I wouldn't when we're because most people are not aware consciously aware of that stuff that has absolutely robbed them of their personal power I certainly wasn't aware of it so it's not a case of you see it as a gift initially we've got to honor the journey we've got to honor the pain that it has created but within a very short space of time and you know it will come up it's seen it's understood oh that's where it came from okay because okay. no i i wouldn't most people won't remember uh, an incident that happened maybe when they were four or five and it might be you'd look at it now and think that's not why are you getting upset but when you bring the toddler then you understand the wide open mind when born is looking for safety to be seen to be heard to be fed mm -hmm. If we're not seen and heard is more important than being fed. And if this has been going on for eons of years, this conditioning. So there's no judgment, no blame. It's like I always say to people, part all the information, all the people, all of that, because the most important relationship in all of creation is the one with yourself. The minute I have an idea that oh, I'm bringing this out to the world, no. I realize, uh oh, you've separated, come back into presence, inspiration, allow that to flow through. So just in terms of saying it's a gift. I can now say my fear was my greatest teacher, but there's no way I would have been able to say that when I was in it. So there's a mm -hmm. timing about everything, and that's really important. There's a timing, you said, a timing about everything. When you get to the stage when you're out of the choppy waters, when you've cleared the emotional charge, absolutely, if it feels right to say it was my greatest teacher, which is mm -hmm. what I say, yes. but I certainly yeah. would not have been saying that years ago when the crossroads, you know, mm -hmm. you're right. on the edge. Yes. When you're on yeah. the edge, it's not a gift. You yeah, get, uh, no, absolutely. Gift. I suppose I was it's talking in terms of acknowledging what happened and what you experienced then, but I get, as you say, there's a right time and just, and but now having the ability to, to see the learning that was that was part of that as well. Well, no, when you're when you've released the emotional charge and you're free of it, well, then you can now you're free of it. You know, okay. we're talking releasing. Okay. We're not talking uh, a talking to learn about it, or we're talking. Okay. The work that I do is we are releasing the emotional charge. Okay. So coming back to me, mine turned out to be deeply rooted fear which had anxiety and a real insecurity on it. Mm -hmm. All of that anxiety, insecurity has been released. And with it now, because the fear was seen, acknowledged and worked through, I don't have fear. I have caution, yes, but I don't have fear. Okay, it's so fascinating. When I listen to you and I watch your videos, I just, I could, I, you know, it's, I just love this information Maybe and knowledge. Just, and More often than not, that's me talking to my, like, I, I am really, you know, I, I don't know to explain it. This is my life experience. Yes. It's, it's, yes, I work with clients, but honestly, it's the question is always, what do I want to experience in life? I tune in and it could be, what do I want to create? Mm -hmm. and, and how... Because then that's the work. If I have an idea and I want to create something, I'm not talking about work now. Um, if I want to create something and I see it, I've got to tune in and do the work on the inside to clear and create the space in me in order to hold it in the external. You won't hold it in the external if you don't have the capacity and the space within. Right. right. So right. I'm digging. I keep digging. You know, I'm digging. Yes. <laughs> Some days yes. I say, uh, yeah, well, you know what? Tomorrow, <laughs> there's no judgment. And when we're living more in present moment awareness with ourselves, out of the anxiety, out of the fear, and we've done that work, honestly, Sinead, we see how much time and space is in a day. 
when we see it in moments, and I used to be really caught up in psychological time, you know, the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> I don't even say it. Half the time I have to go, what day is it today? Yeah, <laughs> I think a lot of people do now. For now different I reasons. I do appreciate the weekend and Sunday I love because that's just, Sunday is just, I keep it as the rest day. Um, I'm going to butt in now. Okay, yeah. I'm just going to shift us slightly because I want to grant you a wish. I grant everybody a wish. So what would that wish be for you? It's really interesting, Sinead, when you do this work on, on, on presence, labeling falls away mm. um so if i was to say my wish is it just feels like i'm going outside of myself okay I, i'm going external um mm -hmm. oh i suppose if, if i had a hope or if really if anybody's listening you and me talking to each other yes and if I go back in my own journey and the despair and depression doesn't describe where I had to go to, you know, it's like going down into a shaft, a tunnel with no light. Mm -hmm. um, and I can talk about it now because I, all the emotional charge is gone. If you were talking about it when you're in it, it's just mm -hmm. so painful. I would say there is hope. And I would say, I remember being told by my siblings, there's hope. And I remember my mind going, they don't know there is no hope so i know what it feels like not to have hope and i understand the mind and how it can take over but i've journeyed through it i've had the experience this isn't from a book i've i've done it mm -hmm. and it can be step by step there is support but don't give up and i'm not saying don't give up on the day or anything like that just try and step back and tune in and catch a glimpse of just anything even if it's i have water or there's a plant or something and then try and reach out and i know how painful that is because i know i put the the cover over hiding away you know i would have hid away probably for the rest of my life if i could have mm -hmm. and, right. because obviously the whole immune system goes down so really i think it will be a message of we have all the resources within us to to release whatever the problem is that's going on because we had the capacity to create it in the first place but we weren't aware of it we were we were so much younger and we can come back into that curiosity that open mind we can clean up the lens of our perception or whatever writing went on the walls of our mind and we're talking limiting beliefs assumptions defending my position he said she said you're right mm -hmm. comparing judging yes can you imagine the freedom? I know, I know, absolutely. The freedom that I have from myself. Yes. It wasn't anybody else. Yes, yes. It was me doing it to me. So that freedom, that wish of freedom, mm -hmm. throw, I throw it out there because I have no judgment on where people are in their own journey. And this is a life experience. And we get to choose, and I say that gently because it might have looked like I was choosing not to come out of depression, but honestly, I couldn't see a way out. And unless you can or you get the right fit, it's so painful, so hard, so raw. Yeah. So absolutely. I made it to the other side and I'm I live to tell the tale and I work with yeah. other people. And obviously you don't have to be in those depths. Uh, so yes. really, we're talking abundance and we're talking freedom and that's the work that I do with myself and that's what I do with other people. Which all sounds amazing to me. I swear to God, this is just, I love this. <laughs> I really do. It's so ordinary in another way yes. because it's our true nature. Yes. yes. But we're all, we're, no, I should say we're all, um, it's that, uh, it's this part of the mind that maybe has just taken over and we need to get it back into its beautiful box where it's functional. Absolutely. Where we open up the other lens of perception, which actually holds all of it. It doesn't mm -hmm. judge any of it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. how we act out, how we are, whether I'm munching crisps or if I, if I perceive myself to have bad habits, I don't even judge that. Then they right. fall away. Yes. Yes. I don't have to have a big, I'm going to give up this and yes. I'm going to put myself to this. Now I go, aha. Yeah. Absolutely. I see you eating kettle crisps. The more I, <laughs> no the plugs. More, 
the more I bring myself into the awareness, sometimes now I'm going, they don't even taste the same. And of course they don't taste great, but it's my perception that they're delicious. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Sinead, yes. I'm not letting go with that <laughs> for the moment. <laughs> Okay, so Denise, can you tell um, tell everybody, I guess, how to contact you, where to find you, any social media spaces that you're in, any of that? Well, I go under the name uh, Denise Brannock, Mind and Stress Management. Um, I work one to one with clients. Check me out uh, for a free consultation. And I also run the online cafe, which I really love. And that's a support for maybe clients that I've worked with or anybody who wants to start the journey. It's not a deep dive. You know, that's in a one to one session, but it's starting the journey, getting the experience of the deeper lens of perception, the peace and ease of personal power. And then we look at what's getting in our way. And as I do the work on myself, I kind of can feel that's evolving. So I might change the name uh, for 2021. Exciting. Um, I've seen the, I've seen the feedback you get about that and the reviews that you're getting, which are amazing. And I also spoke to somebody that went to see you one on one and she just blew her mind and it was really funny. So I said, so how does Denise work with you? How does she do it? I don't know. <laughs> All she knows is she's free. That's it. And it was Eight, huge you know why? For her. Because the, the client is actually doing the work and, and you know, and you, you know, the power of presence. I've said it to you about, yes. you know, listening to you and the power of presence that you bring into the relationship when you're working with people. Mm -hmm. um, do you know, I love that she blew my mind because we, we all need to just get out of our heads. Yes. <laughs> but it's, not easy. it's not easy when we're over identified. So I suppose really the work that I do is that we are clearing, cleaning this up and we're moving into the, the body into the spaciousness and as I say it does not take months or years mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and, and I nearly say Sinead we can start right here right now even focusing on our breath shifting our awareness out now the mind will say no 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 come on up here come over here come over there to do this do this it's managing this we need to have this mind management on the school agenda that might be something I'll get into before I die yeah no that sounds absolutely but, amazing absolutely but don't you work with groups anyway don't you do, I, do, I know but, you worked with do some school groups definitely I do but I, imagine mm. that imagine that subject on the agenda they'd be flocking yes. to it because yes. children will get it yes absolutely especially kids absolutely yeah yeah what a start absolutely. because their mind is wide open and, and yes. they want to enjoy that Yes. And we don't mean to, we really don't mean to dumb them down, but yeah. you know, yeah. that's Absolutely. just the art of being human. But actually, mm -hmm. then as we get older, we have a choice. Yeah. Do we want to open up the space within ourselves and give that gift to ourselves and then from there to, to other people? Um, so on that note, because yeah. it's a lovely note to end on, we'll say goodbye to Facebook. Uh, and thank you so much, Denise Brannock. Everybody look her up. Denise, just remind us, what's the name of your business again, please? It, it's, it's in my name, Denise Brannock, Mind and Stress Management. And Sinead, thanks a million. It's so lovely to meet you. I feel I've met you in person, even though we haven't. So that will tell you about the power of connection. So I can't wait to meet you in person. Brilliant. Either can I? I'm going to stop the recording now.